So, just over a week ago, it was announced that Doctor Who would be having a simulcast online big drop internationally. It was like 5 and 7 p.m. in America, midnight in the UK, 1 or 2 a.m. in Paris, France, and like 8 a.m. in Australia and such. Unfortunately, the UK got the, the short end of the stick here. And in response to that news, I did a live stream segment, but this came out like just after I did the live stream segment, so I don't think it's going to properly mention that one but melon rattler who we've talked about before uh russell t davis and stephen moffat laugh at doctor who fans and i love this thumbnail because it looks like i am stephen moffat like there's russell t davis laughing here fire in the glasses and such but like wh why am i in this thumbnail if it's about rusty davis and stephen moffat like wh I am i stephen moffat yeah, is, is that what's happening here? Is that what's being implied here? But anyway, Rusty Davis and Stephen Moffat laugh at Doctor Who fans. People have asked me to cover this. Let's check it out. Really bad announcement from Doctor Who the other day. Well, the fan base is kind of not happy about it. The reactions have gone from mildly unpleased to pissed. All fans like me are just apathetic and just pointing and laughing at the pricks in charge at this point. But let's have some fun with this. Let's have a look at what some of the bootlickers have to say about this apparent this apparent decent change. Nothing's everything's fine, guys. I can say why fans are annoyed at the schedule change. Okay, here's the thing though, because I, I know that like Rabbi from Another Planet does this as well. He just reads like perfectly reasonable statements and comments, but he just does a stupid voice and there's like no actual argument or response. I think I wonder if that's going to be the same thing here. Are we just going to get like a sarcastic voice or are we actually going to get an argument or a response here? Everything's fine, guys. I can see why fans are annoyed at the schedule change. <sighs> And I think that there is a legitimate case, legitimate case to be made for how undignified it is for a 60-year-old BBC institution having to be released to cater to an American Disney Plus streaming schedule that is ultimately arbitrary. However, well, this is where the bootlicking begins because this guy really, really wants a fucking job. <laughs> As someone who is... I, I, I see this line used against me often. Like, I've been working freelance in the TV and film industry for about seven or eight years now. I've already worked with the BBC. I've already worked with Disney. I've worked with ITV, Channel 4, Channel 5, Netflix, Amazon. I, I, I don't understand this idea that I'm somehow looking for like a job specifically. Like the BBC hire me for stuff anyway. I've got a BBC job this weekend. Like <laughs> I don't understand like how this line of attack is meant to make any sort of sense, but whatever. Like it isn't even an original one. This is one that like problem being and John the White keep on trying to push. It's not even an original criticism or an original gotcha. He's, he's plagiarizing other bootlickers. Interested in audience viewing habits and patterns, I think it's worth biting the bullet for this series. Yeah, maybe you might have to stay off social media or watch the show in a different way. And in return, perhaps this is the release schedule that... Yeah, by the way, he's basically excusing Russell T. Davis and Disney dropping this on midnight because no one wants to watch this piece of shit television show anymore. That's the sign of a really healthy, really healthy show, guys. They drop it at midnight when no one's fucking awake, everyone's in bed, and the Americans are getting priority even though nobody over there even fucking watches it. This could make the show more... Active. Right, okay, one second. Because this is like... It just, it, it, this just demonstrates that he has absolutely no ideological coherence. That he, he'll just honestly just say anything just to like be mad at stuff or be mad at me specifically one second because... where, where when does he mention it when does he mention it like i said I, i've not watched this before so I'm, i apologize that this is on the fly okay so he's saying oh it's a dying show it's a failing show because in the uk you have to watch it at midnight but here's a video the doctor who christmas viewing figures are lies where he talks about game of thrones doing incredibly well dropping at 2 a.m in the uk I normally do anymore i'll point your attention towards a show like game of thrones which is still pulling in millions of well i'm not sure about the house of the dragon viewing figures but the finale pulled in a good fucking chunk of people that was only six. The Game of Thrones finale in the UK dropped at 2 a.m. And here he is singing its praises. But because Doctor Who's doing a midnight simulcast release and he's like, oh yeah, it's a failing show. It's a dying show. Like, like I said, there's no ideological consistency here. It's just a thing I don't like is automatically bad. But I'm not going to apply any thought, any cohesion, any sort of actual thought process to it. Empty head. Empty head. 
accessible and paved the way to an audience size that Doctor Who could only have dreamed of decades ago. What the fuck is he talking about? Putting Doctor Who on a streaming platform isn't going to boost its popularity. It's already as accessible as, it go as it's going to be. It's already online, like an hour after the show, not even that after the show's aired. I don't think it's even that... With the Disney Plus deal, aren't some countries getting Doctor Who for the very first time? Like, genuinely, like, that, that, it's a pretty self... It's it's pretty self-explanatory. Like, either he's just pretending to not understand it, which is possible, but I think he's just, like, he just genuinely doesn't understand how the world works? I don't know. That just seems to be the case. I, I wouldn't put it past him. It's longer. I think it's basically on the show the moment it, it's finished airing. It's... But it, Doctor Who is on the iPlayer the, fin the moment it's finished airing. Yes, in the UK. We're talking about an international viewer. We're talking about Disney Plus distribution, which I've mentioned this in my video, in my segment, which he, he doesn't even respond to the, to the actual video I did. He plays footage from it, but he doesn't actually seem to respond to it. I even mentioned in that segment, in that video, about how accessibility in regards to foreign subtitles, to audio description in different languages and different foreign dubs and stuff, that's another aspect of accessib that's another aspect of accessibility internationally that Doctor Who has never had before. Like this is pretty basic, straightforward stuff. There's fucking more on things. Oh, it's gonna be prior to streaming. This is going to grow the show. This is not how it fucking works. People come to watch. How does it work then? Please explain how it works in your little empty mind of yours. A television show, if it's good, not because it's dumped onto the BBC iPlayer for everyone to fucking binge. If the experience fails... It's n it's not there to be binged. Like The first two episodes are dropping at the same time, but then it's going to be a weekly thing. What, what are you even on about? If the experiment fails, then go back to the UK first linear broadcasting for the next series. But I think it's an experiment worth running at least once. This fucking guy is so unbelievably disingenuous. This is the same guy. What's, what's wrong with that? Like, you, <laughs> he just, like I said, he just like puts a silly voice on and is like, oh, it's so disingenuous, so stupid. And then doesn't proceed to give a single counter argument or a single actual rebuttal. Like, like, there's is anyone like genuinely persuaded by this? Like, I'll go in the comment section later, but genuinely. By the way, that I think said the Star Beast is a better episode of Doctor Who than Rose, the launch pad of the modern golden standard of Doctor Who. Did I say that? Wait, did I say that? So unbelievably disingenuous. This is the same guy, by the way, that I think said the Star Beast is a better episode of Doctor Who than Rose, the launch pad. I don't think I said that. Or if I did say that, I had like a massive like disclaimer or qualifier or addendum to it. One second, do I still have the Star Beast script on my laptop? Do I say that in my review? Damn it, it's annoying because Rose is a character in the show. Interestingly, though, like he doesn't seem to play the clip from my review saying that. He's just playing footage of this behind the scenes with Yasmin Finney. He doesn't show text. He doesn't show the segments. Like, th like, did did I? I don't even recall saying this, or at least saying it in the way he's saying it. I'm not going to be in a rush to rewatch or revisit this, unlike Rose or the Eleventh Hour, where I'm finding new things to love or appreciate all the time. By comparison, the Star Beast feels a bit empty. Hi, Theo. So, I th I say the exact opposite of what he's saying. Do, can, like, can anyone, like, recall? Like, I I think maybe I, I... I don't recall saying this. I think I'm being gaslit in this video. I mean, it would help if he played the segment. It would help if he played, like, me actually saying it. ...pad of the modern golden standard of Doctor Who. Yes, we know. We know everything. Thanks. And you know nothing. God, it's this clip again, isn't it? They really have nothing else, do they? God. Is this you're not a woman anymore? Because she'd have understood. Something a male presenting Time Lord will never understand. Meanwhile... It's like when you're a kid. The first time they tell you that the world's turning and you just can't... God, he's it. really going to play the full segment? He, this is going this is going to get copyright struck if I play this. We're falling through space, you and me. That's who I am. Shut up and take my money! Like, firstly, I didn't even say that 
the Star Beast is better than Rose. He's just flat out lied about that. But also, this is such a disingenuous edit. You could do this for any episode to make any case if you wanted to. In fact, I'm going to do it right now. One second. This will take me a minute to set up, but I, I can do this right now. Because like I said, thankfully, I recorded this live stream and I had my big Doctor Who folder. You could honestly make this comparison with like any episode if you put the right clips together. For example, you could do this with the Star Beast, where it's like, oh, Melon Rattler thinks that the Star Beast is a terrible episode, but Rose is the beacon of Doctor Who. And then you edit it like this. But some nights, I lie in bed thinking, what have I lost? Versus... Oh, you like Rose, the one with the burping bin and the babe, babe, sugar, p -p 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 pizza. Like, oh, that's the episode. I, I don't even think that, but it just shows how easily you could do this. It requires no thought. It requires no effort. And it just, it's stupid. It's stupid on the face of it. And I hope anyone watching this understands that. And also the fact that he played a 20 second clip and this video hasn't been blocked and copyright nuked by the BBC. God's sake, and he thinks that I'm trying to, like, suck up to the BBC when they'll block my videos at zero provocation. Experiment. It's not an experiment, Mr. Retardus. It's not. It's Russell T. Davis. It must be pretty bad to, like, call me Mr. Retardus, but also know that you have absolutely no argument to rebuttal against me. How how bad must you feel to, to be outwitted and outthought and outargued by somebody who you think is a retard? Crying out loud, Melon Rattler. Get some perspective. Get some dignity. It's Russell T. Davis showing a white flag. He's conceding. He knows it's fucking dead on arrival. He knows nobody's going to be watching. I can't wait for the disastrous TV ratings, you disingenuous fucking cockwaffle. I mean, the last time we talked about viewing figures, you said that they were a lie. You said that the BBC was fudging the numbers and making it up because of some weird, like, problem being fake news, well, actually, Lizo Mazimba shit. So even if the view of, even if the viewing figures are great, you're just going to claim that's some weird Jewish conspiracy. But to finish this video off, we're going to talk about... See, so, like, he's not, even, he's not even going to, like, actually acknowledge any of the arguments, or he's not going to talk about the video segment I did. He's just going to move straight on to Stephen Moffat. Stephen Moffat apparently congratulating Russell T. Davis on the amazing new idea for the streaming schedule. He described it as a whole... <laughs> he described it as a whole new level of insane greatness. Now, the beautiful thing about 2024 is we've been through nearly eight years, producers, directors, and people in entertainment talking down to the audience, and the passive aggressiveness as a whole in the entertainment industry, and we can see through the- Such as? Passive aggressive assholes in the entertainment industry now. There's been like a, it's kind of like a, a detector. You can kind of see through all their bullshit. And if something's being overpraised, like, this new Doctor, the new series, mainly by the people creating the product, then, you know, it's probably shit. I mean, the new series isn't even out yet, so who else is going to talk about and praise it? To be fair, this video came out before it was announced that Steve Moffat was coming back to the show proper. So, I, you know, I won't, like, hold that against Mel and Rattler. But, yeah, obviously, Stephen Moffat and Rusty Davis and other people who have worked on the show are going to praise it and promote it because, A, they've worked on it, and, B, no one else has seen it yet. So, <laughs> duh. Shit. They're not going to talk about the horrific, and I mean horrific, fucking audience scores, audience numbers they're pulling in. The former show would have Wait, weren't the audience... One second, let's get the aud If he's talking about the AI Appreciation Index, which I don't even think is a good metric, but it's the one that he's using. So, when you Google it, the first thing, Doctor Who the Star Beast achieves the highest audience appreciation index in six years. Even on his own terms, even with his own bad faith interpretation, he's just wrong about everything. That takes some mad skills, to be honest. That's actually quite impressive, to be so wrong that even by your own standards, even by your own metrics, you're just doubly, triply wrong. That's quite impressive made the comments underneath Russell T. Davis's Instagram post announcing the news, which revealed that the run will begin with a double bill. Yes, we know all this bullshit. The first two episodes will arrive first on BBC iPlayer at midnight, almost like a B-level TV show being dropped in the middle of nothing because 
they are terrible. I mean, it's just, has he even like acknowledged that it's a simulcast thing? Because by, by the framing of what he said in this video, it, he's just like, oh, they're just dropping it at midnight, ignoring the context that it's dropping at midnight because it has to match up with all of the other, the other time zones across the world. Like I mentioned, I do think that the UK gets the short end of the stick here by having the midnight drop, but America gets it at like 5 and 7 p.m. depending on which region in America that you're in. You know, big country, multiple time zones. So yeah, but I don't even think he, he's acknowledged that in this video. Terrified of the ratings, and if anything, this is probably going to make them worse. Moffat did not comment specifically on the iPlayer news, which has drawn criticism from some UK fans, but he did jokingly add, speaking as a fan, I cannot wait to complain about it. And this is just beautiful, because it encapsulates everything wrong with people in charge, everything wrong with the entertainment industry, pricks like this talking down to the people that are forced to pay pay a that are forced to pay a license fee they are openly mocking and berating them god i didn't realize that melon rattler was so triggered by humor you know i thought that he'd be okay with like some light jabs and some light 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 jokes stephen moffat's been joking about stuff like this for 25 years there's the behind the scenes documentary for the curse on fatal death where he was talking about how fans are probably going to hate the comic relief special from 1999 because of the sonic screwdriver joke where it's got three settings he thinks that fans are going to hate him and he's gonna they're going to hate the special because of the romance between the doctor and the companion after what happened with the team TV movie like he's been making these light-hearted jabs for years like i don't know why melon rattler is trying to frame this as oh doctor who's gone woke and terrible and stephen moffat's joined them with the elites and now they're laughing at fans for crying out loud the gag in blink from 2007 where the police officer is like oh this police box you know the windows are the wrong size it's a weird shape that was done specifically in reference to the fan backlash and the fan death threats that were sent in 2004 when the TARDIS was first spotted on location with Christopher Eccleston and Billy Piper. And they were like, oh, the police box is the wrong shape, the windows are the wrong size. Like, I, I, Stephen Moffat, out of all of the writers, consistently for 25 years has been making these jokes and these jabs. But now that Melon Rattler is committed at being this weird bootlicker in the culture war, he's like, eh, humor, oh, jokes, how dare you? Like, God's sake, such, like, such spinelessness, like, such, like, openly, like, being triggered by light jabs and humor. Like, I, I can understand why Melon Rattler like, has no intention of showing himself on camera, because if he did show on camera, you'd see the strings above him, because how can anyone with no spine be held up without strings? You could say it's joking, but to me that reads as passive-aggressive. They're fucking salty that their audience is turning on their bullshit. And I, there are rumours that Stephen Moffat is coming... Citation needed. ...back to write a Christmas special. I don't want that. Let his legacy be intact. If he wants to be a passive-aggressive prick on Instagram, let him. At least he's not come back... He had that horrific ending to his run as Doctor Who showrunner. But... Looking back, that's like golden era level of writing compared to the He's the same sort of guy who would complain about how comedy is dead because you can't be horrid about marginalized people anymore. Oh, it's so funny. Like the guy who um who wrote and directed Joker was like, "Oh no, uh, my film's not going to win best screenplay at the Oscars because, you know, it's it's too it's too hardcore. It's it's people get too offended by it." And then it loses out that year to Jojo Rabbit, like the Nazi mockery movie. Like, the, of all of the films it could have lost against. Mwah. Perfect. Perfect. Shit we get now. Please, Moffat, stay away. I don't want to see it. No Doctor Who. <laughs> One day later, and Moffat, <laughs> Moffat's back. No real Doctor Who fan wants to see you come back at this point. I'm of the opinion that Russell T. Davis has only come back to protect his friend Chinballs because the amount of damage, the amount of... <laughs> the amount of arrogance, the amount of... The amount of unbelievable ignorance that this man has shown and contempt and... and Believe it or not, this was recorded while Melon Rattler was looking into a TV screen that was just not turned on, so it's just his reflection. Fight for his own audience. That paved the way for his fucking career, by the way. That the reason he is probably... That he is living... That we are the reason he is living comfortably. A fucking um, disingenuous. No, prick. no, no, no. Let's not, you know, erase history here, Melon Rattler. Stephen Moffat does not owe his career to Doctor Who fans. He owes his career to having inseminated a TV producer. 
you know, having, you know, whose mother-in-law was one of the biggest TV producers, one of the biggest TV entertainment icons of the 20th century, the Virtue family, okay? Let's not, let's not get ahistorical here, Mellon Rattler, all right? Rick, he thinks he can talk down to the people that pay his fucking bill. Here's a message to people like Russell T. Davis and Moffat and Chimble and Chibnall who think they can talk down to the, the old <laughs> Chimble Chibnall like, <laughs> that just made me I'm sorry that just made me giggle sorry and you're not going to be remembered for your great episodes if you carry on you're going to be remembered for being disingenuous activists that want to mutilate children there is nothing more racist than a white <laughs> he, okay so yeah he's on about like promoting trans people and lgbtq plus people remember we talked about this before mel and rattler got upset and angry and called david tennant a pedophile because of a fake quote that he saw on twitter and then when he when i did the video and we checked that it was a fake quote and he responded and he was like okay yeah so i got caught out yeah yeah he's still a pedo you know yeah because obviously just no thought in his head no thoughts there he, he just thinks oh gay people queer people groomers mutilate kids etc etc like it, these aren't even original thoughts these aren't even like original rebukes in the way yeah it's stupid liberal bbc elitist prick who thinks he's doing good but he's actually doing evil fuck anybody defending these elitist pricks i'll see you guys in the next video damn and he does <laughs> he doesn't even come up with an actual rebuke or a response no. Oh, Nolzone, Mr. Teabag, the gift that keeps on giving. Uh, Nolzone, the guy who said that pee was stored in the bowls. I'm very glad that we're taking his opinion seriously. Oh no, sorry, it wasn't. It wasn't that pee was stored in the bowls. Oh, what was it? No, it was um, it was when um, on Twitter he was responding to a, a, a like a fact posting like account that was like, oh, uh, did you know that the clitoris is the only part of the human body that is specifically for pleasure and has no other function and noel was like uh what about the penis you dumbo and it's like yeah okay <laughs> yep that's anatomy <laughs> it's very funny uh what else we got um da -da, rest in peace dr who well that's mr tyler's i watched his stream and thought let's see what he has to say and you think he's actually going to agree it's a bad idea after seemingly teasing that no he goes let's give it a pass for this series blah 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 and bottles it despite other comments about I, I, okay, so this guy clearly didn't watch the thing. Mr. Tardis is deluded, etc., etc. I'm convinced that Mr. Tardis isn't a true Doctor Who fan. If he was a true fan and who generally cares about the future of the show, he'd call out RTD and Disney on their bullshit on the midnight release crap. Who's actually going to be awake to watch a possible incoming Disney? Just, just go to sleep and then wake up at a normal time and then watch the episode. It, it's, it's not complicated. Come on. What the hell? Oh, Problem being that, so the problem being is, is one of the guys who, who um, Melon Rattler stole the material from about me apparently just wanting to get a job or whatever. But that ridiculous RTD poodle, th that ridiculous RTD poodle piping up again. And considering the fact that Melon Rattler en like ended the video by saying that LGBTQ plus people are groomers and problem being is a gay person, is a gay man. Like, it's kind of like... It's weird that Melon Rattler would accuse me of, like, bootlicking, but his problem being, like, literally just throating the boot right now in the comment section. Problem being who's dedicated his entire online presence to just being, like, dedicated to being the last person in the line when the gas chambers come from conservatives. Like, that sounds extreme, but that is absolutely what problem being is, like, dedicated his entire online presence to being. Just like, yeah, I know these people hate me. I know that people like Melon Rattler think I'm mutilating kids and want to abuse kids, but, you know, because he also doesn't like Doctor Who, I'm completely on board with that. No spine, no principles, just fully throating that boot. Not even licking it, throating it. Melon Rattler ends that video by claiming that Doctor Who fans and the people involved in Doctor Who want to, like, mutilate kids and be groomers and stuff like that. But then he posts this when it's announced that Millie Gibson is no longer going to be in Doctor Who. Millie Gibson fired Doctor Who? I'm going to miss those tits. Talking about somebody who, at the time of this photo, was 19 years old. So, you know, technically not underage, I, but I do think that, uh, you know, Melon Rattler's maybe, you know, four or five years older than your, your average Not My Doctor in terms of, like, age and interest and stuff like that. You know, we've seen what a rabbi from another planet thinks of 15-year-old Victoria from, from Doctor Who. So, yeah, so he's like, oh, they're all groomers and paedophiles, and he's like, oh, those 19-year-old 19 tits, you know, and then he makes it the thumbnail. They're also missing out that you've called Russ T. Davis countless times on different subjects. I honestly, I, I really wish that the narrative that, you know, 
the BBC love me and that they'll support my channel and promote me and stuff was true because it means that they wouldn't copyright strike my videos at every opportunity and that they wouldn't like uh, content ID claim me all the time and that they wouldn't send me passive aggressive stuff. Thank you to Michael for subscribing during the live stream. They wouldn't send me passive aggressive copied and pasted emails about, oh, we actually go beyond fair use dealings in the UK. We've talked about this before. I've talked about, um, I've talked to people like close to the Doc 2 production and BBC Studios do not like my channel. So that's very funny that, the, that, I'm, that I'm sort of perceived as this sort of uh, like super cushy close great close-knit friends with bbc when actually because of my youtube stuff and my content id claims and that they don't they don't like me at all it's very funny melon rattler's video has the same amount of arguments in it actual rebukes and responses and arguments against me as he does have brain cells aka minus 400 which is quite impressive not even like zero like minus 400 almost like these people are disconnected from reality or something yeah well I, I'm not even like the first one to make this comparison, but it is true that like sort of like like um in like committed conservatism and like anti wokeness stuff, it's more akin to like a uh, a mentally like debilitating condition. Like uh, it's sort of like something almost akin to like uh, dementia or Alzheimer's and stuff like that, where the more that you're in it, the more it just rots your brain. The, like the the less connected you are with reality. Like it, like the more you're in that sort of cesspit. It just sort of like messes with your cognitive functions. Like you're detached from reality. You don't see what's happening in the world around you, and you just get progressively dumber. And I'm not saying that as a sort of "her oh, got you," but like it's actually something like that's a, a real sociological thing that I know that psychiatrists and psychologists in the UK want to study, but they need funding from the UK and the current conservative far right government are not going to give them the funding to to demonstrate why their ideology is actually causing debilitating mental health issues for the people who adopt it and consume it it's you know we'll see what happens uh, maybe in the next 10 years when the conservatives are out of power but uh yeah like you, you you hear stories about this all the time people who are like ordinary functioning members of society and then they watch fox news a lot and then it just they just go in they just start mentally faltering like what was the study that was done a while ago that people who listen to and engage with Fox News were not only way less informed than people who concern than people who engaged with or consumed any other type of news coverage, but they actually like broke the scale. They were they were actually like not just less informed, but actively misinformed the opposite way. Like if this is informed, this is like not informed. Like they broke the scale. They went negative and backwards. Like the the studies are there. Like in terms of just like average conservatism to the extent where Mellon Rattler gets angry and upset and calls David Tennant a pedophile over a fake tweet and then doesn't back down or apologize after being called out for it. Like, yeah, still can't believe that he thinks that I'm Stephen Moffat, though.